Hey, everybody. Welcome back once again to the PCS Summer Split Playoffs. We are in the upper bracket finals, one game down. And CTBC Flying Oyster have delivered an explosive volley in this Battle of the Banks. And speaking of CTBC Flying Oyster, I want to thank our sponsor, CTBC Bank, for always being by our side of the PCS and making this whole thing possible. And in addition, I want to extend that thank you to China Airlines for making this playoffs possible as well. Now, Mr. Nightstar, we've got a little bit of a swippy swap on the sides. Beyond Gaming are going to be going on to blue. And how does that affect what you think is going to happen in the draft going up? So there are two problematic picks that did happen in the previous game that might be first pick. One is One the start because with we D and end with a Raven. That is also the second one. Draven, just because of how dominant he is in the bot lane meta, that will either be pick or ban. Um, that has to be for sure addressed. And then the other thing is the fact that Minji's champion pool got heavily pinched. We saw the Silas ban, we saw the Ari ban, and then we saw the first pick, Talia. That's pretty much his three best champions immediately taken off the table. And right. as a result, it did force them onto a very early Orianna pick, which is not the situation they really want to be on the side of Beyond Gaming. So. I think they'll look for either the first pick Draven or the first pick Talia in this second game. I, I think that makes a lot of sense if they take the Draven away themselves. There does seem to be so many bot lane champions that can be massive threats for the side of Beyond to deal with because of how good Shun is in that laning phase. And clearly targeting him out, trying to get him picked off didn't necessarily work because they couldn't burst. A lot of things did have to go right for uh, the side of CFO, and they did a lot of them themselves, but Dragon RNG also played out, so I wonder if, yeah, they just let that you know go next. We'll see if it happens as we are getting up into fixing bands going into this one. So for game number two here, Nightstar, we'll see what changes. The Azir stays the same. The Poppy stays the same. Poppy ban makes a lot of sense because it's champion the Gemini's use a lot, but Husha has not touched. Mm-hmm. Husha has, for the most part, avoided it, mostly because of the fact that while it does bring a lot of early game pressure, it doesn't necessarily bring the full-on team fight that BYG are looking for. All right, similar bands this time around as well, with the Nautilus extending in for Beyond Gaming. But you see that the Talia, much more valuable for the early pickup. It's important for Minji to be able to stay on what he likes, especially with the Ari and the Silas Hardy band away. So for CFO, they have their pick of the bot lane outside that Sivir. And we might be getting ourselves a Callista game for this number two. Ooh. Oh, oh, okay. We're reconnected. I feel like Shun can just play whatever. Yep, yeah. okay, we got you back in, Nightstar. But uh, you didn't miss too much, just a little bit of a hover as right. the Callista does get locked in in the end. Callista locked in. Does struggle a little bit against something like the Clea, right? You throw it on the work ground, it does mm -hmm. make it very difficult for her to hop around. And it might just hopping. I wonder what we're going to pair with it. Yeah. Victor locked in. Well, uh, looks like Nightstar coming back into this one. We'll keep it going as we wait. And for Beyond Gaming, as the ball's back in their court, they see Mission on the Victor, a very comfortable champion for him, especially when his own pool is a little bit pinched. Beyond are going to opt for the Lucian Nami lane. So we are going into the early game, and this should give an opportunity for Wako and Kino to get a lane lead for a change. Yeah, it looks like they're just going to fight, fight with fire to a certain degree and for the side of CFO, do they go for something like the Ash? Uh, just or the Renata. have the extra double range. The Renata makes a lot of sense here as well. But instead, it looks like they want to go ahead and lock in their jungler. Diego let through and it also allows them to go ahead and maintain sort of that strategy of double banning Husha in the second phase. Yeah, so while they can keep Husha down, who is the early game strategy? Beyond, at the very least this time, have got champions that function a lot better in that early game. The 2v2 should start to favor them. There's the Wukong ban, as predicted, as expected. It's a champion that Husha's played far more than any other. The Viego's also a takeaway. This puts him on something like Lee Sin or Zin Zhao. Lee Sin, Zin, Trundle, I think, is really, really 
Yeah. Good. Vi. Here. Maybe. The Vi. I like the Vi into a victor. Yes, the Vi uh, definitely <laughs> applies fine. a lot of pressure onto mission during the early phase. And right now, I'm kind of looking at the Trundle pick. BYG, they haven't really played a ton of Trundle, but Trundle is just so good into that composition from the side of CFO, right? Because the Kalista is really going to hate those pillars coming down. And in addition, Victor is not going to like that either. So that setup is true. pretty strong along with the work ground. Like if you put work ground and then you throw down the pillar, it does give you a knock or a displacement to then set off the traps so that you will get instant lockdown. an opportunity for Beyond to make the outplays, the 5v5s, five that's what they're known for after all. But the Renata does get locked in by Koala, and I can't help but thinking this was probably the game plan. Even though the Amumu was banned away, which gives a lot of power for Beyond, you're playing up against a, a Lucian Nami lane. It does make sense to have some counter dive if you can. We'll see how well Koala can pilot this champion as he has on multiple occasions. And one of our better Renatas in the league as Beyond playing around with a couple of their no picks way. and hovers to see what Pusha ends up okay. taking. I, yeah, I can't see, I can't see the talent coming through. It would be something. The Sejuani comes out. It is a flex pick as we have seen uh, before, but Likai more than capable of playing this champion. I kind of feel like if you do, you're sort of signaling the rest that he can just have his way with you up topside. But that does feel like how it went in game one. So wouldn't be surprised. Mm -hmm. No I point in flexing at this point, right? I mean, yeah, you you're going anyways. to show your hand right here. There we go! Ooh, that's a strong Fiora hand! Oh man, double deuces! We got the Fiora blind! Leak Guy says, come at me, Rest. What do you got? So now I think we're setting up for uh setting up for a duel up top. Let's see what we go for. Unless oh, no Rest flips it around and goes for a team fight pick. No way. That would Surely. be such He's not played Orn all split. No oh my way. goodness! What? what is going on? The craziest thing that Res could do is play a team fighting tank, but he did it. Okay. Uh, there is a. All right, we're getting a ram jam. For game There's two. a lot to digest in this second draft because the drafts they kind of make sense. But the mystifying part is really how it came about to be, right? Because this is a last pick or into the Fiora. And one of the things that we do criticize Rest on is the fact that he doesn't play uh, the Fiora pick. So because of that, BYD actually just outright said, we're locking this pick in and you can't do anything to stop it. And Rest responds with, yeah, I can't with a champion and it's just going to come down to can he just out lane Li Kai with just a suboptimal 1v1 champion that is the question i think we're gonna have to be keeping our eyes locked in up on the top at the same time it's almost like the script is flipped for game number two because it is cfo they're gonna have a pretty solid late game team fight when you compare it across the board to beyond gaming who are a little bit more about that early power and the side pushing. It's almost yep. like gonna turn into a, a one 3 one situation. You've got the Talia that can move about the map. You've got a Sejuani that can set up picks for you. You've got a Lucian Nami lane, which basically all but signals, hey, we wanna win this game early enough. We'll have to see if they are able to carry it as we go into game number two in the Battle of the Banks. One game in favor of CTBC Flying Oyster, but Mega Bank looking to fire back for themselves. The winner, the stakes have never been higher here as it is a grand finals appearance on the line and a guaranteed lock-in to the world championships. 30 seconds until minions spawn. Yeah, the big storyline here, not only is it Battle of the Banks, it's also the fact that this is a... One of these teams will be going to Worlds, whether it's through play-ins or straight into the group stage. That will be determined at the end of this weekend. However, this is very much a side lane competition coming in from BYG. Not so much of the big, robust team fight setups that we've constantly seen in the first two series. And getting slapped down like that in the first game does sort of force your hand in just 
full pivoting, right? Uh, so I don't exactly. hate this approach coming in from BYG. It's just a matter of, are they able to fully execute around it? I think that's going to be the challenge. Will they be able to do it? They certainly have given themselves some firepower early on. And it's more comfort for CFO in some of these cases too, especially mission as we get our pause coming through. Um, let's talk a little bit more about how these drafts broke down or about how this composition is uh, mm -hmm. is put into place because we are seeing the Lucian Nami running, of course, with the now seemingly much more common first strike. So it does have a little bit of power in the burst into the later stages of the game. Mm -hmm. But you're dealing with a side of CFO that have a pretty beefy front line, I have to admit. We've seen Gemini's Viego build into tank as the game goes on. That does seem to be kind of their modus operandi because it's going to be about protecting mission, about protecting uh, the Callista as well. So I, I'm wondering, Nightstar, like at, at what point in the game do we start to do we start to wonder when does Beyond need to make a play? Do we want to see them dominate the lane phase, something that's been tough for any team to do against CFO? Yeah, with the Sejuani pick, you're going to want to attack some of these lanes a little bit earlier. But as the game progresses, the the game will shift. They can still certainly scale to a certain degree, but it's not going to be in the straight up team fight, which is what we typically see out of. Oh, okay. Ooh. Me to oh, kill. oh my goodness, you. they're going all in for this one. The Lucian Nami lane loses out on first blood. Koala secures it with the ignite for himself. Talk about a bloodthirsty support and a bot laner to pair. Aggressive flash forward, and they burn both of Kino's sums and skewer that fish. What a great start to CFO's game. And yeah, we're going to take a look at the instant replay on that one, how it all started, how it got underway. Well, uh, this 2v2, so much for the favorability because that's a great handshake from Koala. And here's the thing, Lucian Nami is really strong, but that's at level three. That was a trade at level one. And level one, Kalissa still reigns supreme because you kind of get one and a half skills, right? Being able to constantly stick onto a target by hopping with that passive. And now Minji will be able to hold on to his summoners. And that's the most important factor of that game. Gemini still really pleased with the result, being able to burn through the rest of the potions in the hands of Minji. Yeah, that's helpful as mission will be able to uh lane even more freely and you know a lot of wave clear between both atelia and the victor victor a little bit hard to gank but early on you think would be the best opportunity minji gonna be forced to back away and take a little bit of downtime take a breather maybe go to the mall and uh spend a little while jamming out to some uh some chill vibes like we have seen on the star guardian atelia playlist uh, shout out to that one <laughs> yeah I don't know if you've seen that night starts it's honestly it's it's just an hour plus of of just pure pure vibes man all right i will have to tune into that one then as oh i'll link you up stand, after the series there's a lot of problems they're going to miss that ward and that's actually massive although pucha i think just showed on the wave straight up uh yeah down I... in this bottom lane uh, they finally hit level three now they can start looking for trades and the big thing is just going to be, again, can their lanes hold up? As, okay, that's actually a big pickoff there. That was good. Got the flash out of mission. He does respect it. Doesn't greed. Thinks he can hold on to it instead, not wanting to give mission, uh, or rather Minji, a setup. First blood so far, the only kill in this game. A lot earlier than last time around. It took 17 and a half in game one. See if I were able to get it in three. With that 2v2 down bottom been earlier than that if i recall correctly straight up level one kill yeah so yeah that was that was something it's a great bot lane shin and koala oh yeah probably our two best bot lanes in the league mm -hmm. and it is sort of a mismatch down in this bot lane because of that right because kino while he is really really good support one of our better supports in the league he really shines when it's more of a melee versus melee matchup. And in this case, being on the Nami does change the complexion of this bot lane quite a bit. That is very fair. I think, yeah, if there's one weakness for, for Kino, it is, is the difference between him on, on heavy engage supports and these enchanters. And Lucian Nami, definitely something we... I don't think we're entirely expecting to see, although they have 
taken at least four times prior. The yoink in on Takino does a little bit more damage as the wave is shoved. And man, you can see the CS lead just growing here. And unfortunately for Beyond Gaming, they cede control over the Dragon Pit. And wouldn't you know it, Nightstar, it's another first Infernal. Another combat Ooh, dragon six. here. Is, oh, yeah, look at this. Not gonna, Mission. It's not going to be a kill. But he zones but him it out. Serves, He's got no teleport. They can just start Drake. Yeah, exactly. They might actually be able to get a kill onto the bottom as the bubble stops it. That's a nice play. Gemini spotted. And here's the thing. They don't even need to start the dragon. Just the fact that they're able to chunk down Minji so low, it allows them to now get bot side vision. They're able to once more throw their jungler into byg's jungle and get more and more knowledge and it's all about the knowledge game keeping track of these junglers this gemini okay oh, this is a big Usha play finds him he has a level for help this is big right now gemini has no oh, uh, flash to get out and he uses oh my goodness shouldn't just die straight up out to kino while that's happening Gemini couldn't get in there to play it and beyond. They call the bluff. They spot the greedy dragon play and they capitalize. That's a huge turn. And down in that bottom lane, that's also a massive moment there is they actually had trade advantage. You look at the itemization, you have that uh, serrated dirt completed by Wako. That actually gives him more trade power than Shun, who just now completed tier two boots. So it just goes back to the fact, hey, level one, Callisto reigns supreme, but afterwards, at level three and beyond, that's where things will shift back in favor of this Lucian as we will get to see the replay. It's just so much oh. burst with the additional damage coming oh. in uh, from the Serrated Dirk and the flash away to secure the kill is essential because that would have been the bailout coming through if he committed to that fight yeah i actually think shun thought he was just gonna be able to take that the, the bailout was so fast that it seemed like it was probably premeditated at the same time uh beyond they just call the bluff on both sides and get themselves the dragon and the kill yes it goes to kino but still not too bad and that kind of recorrects the the 2v2 <laughs> mistake from earlier on first yep. drake that battle stat that beyond get for themselves certainly going to be happy it's and massive. they can use it on the map immediately inferno is huge for them because it extends the amount of kill pressure that they are going to have in this 2v2 it also okay get nice that level six first out. yes level Good six calling. hit by the lucian and once it gets out of the lane phase how Wako uses this culling is going to be key because uh, he has to be super proactive in utilizing it. Not only are you going to get big chunk damage, but if you combine it in tandem with your first strike, you just farm so much extra gold as now Wako. Yeah. Ooh. Look at the damage. A lot of damage on turn. both of them as they go all in for Wako, but he's looking for the outplay. Oh, Shun! With the Ren stack pull, they're able to get the kill. And meanwhile, Shun trying to tag team it out with Koala, but this seems oh, extremely over-aggressive. Without the bailout back, Kino could wave goodbye to both of them here, and that's gonna be at least one for the long kill. Saw that coming, but couldn't stop it. Here comes Minji Koala going forward with the bubble, gets the yoink back, bailouts on him as well, but they outlive and outlast, and whew, I've never seen a wave goodbye like that. Oh my lord. That is... That is the definition of hubris. That that was... Staying around with the health bars like that was absolutely the definition of hubris. And you can understand it, right? Because it is a support. However, unfortunately, it is not. Who has still one of the it's higher damages when it comes we to the support game. position. Yes. Get to see the replay. This is well executed coming in from BYG. Remember, they have level advantage. It's just they they overplay their hand. And Kino oh, flashes, and Kino flashes into the, the face minion call. wave to dodge, and also puts himself in a position where he's still able to output damage on CFO. I love that positioning, and then the wave. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's kind of a <laughs> nothing long you can wave. do about that. Yeah. yeah, um, 
but they didn't have to recommit to it, right? They could have escaped upriver, and I think that that is the big difference. And Beyond gonna win out as a result of it. They are still down in the gold game, but by like the slimmest of margins here. It's 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 100, 200 gold as they get the blue buff takeaway. You can start to see Usha keeping Gemini a little bit down, at least in some of these fights. Still, the 2v2 is kind of a toss-up with the level disadvantage even so nice here. because of the play here. And Gemini has arrived. If he can do so blindly, the lane gank could be deadly. We have a three and one Nami support fire. This is it's a bloodthirsty support. Doa would be proud. This is as big of a carry as you could get. Oh, Ooh. okay. We got chicken top. We haven't talked about this all game right now, as it's been all about the bot side. Mm. Rest, uh, by the way, has not really been losing all that hard to Lee Kai. And look at yep. this. Yep. He's just straight up going for the one v one play. Bellows breath on to just shred the health bar, and he asked that question. Is this going to be uh, Rest outplaying Lee Kai in an unfavorable matchup? I think we're starting to get an answer. So far, it's yes. However, it's still, you know, we're still playing the scaling game, and as the game does progress, there's only so much you can do as the Orm against the Fior. Or the Fior is just going to have too much damage after a certain degree. But coming back to the solo lanes in general because this was you know after getting really blasted in game number one we need to see our lanes on the side of byg improve and so far it's not great in this mid lane but mindy's still holding out on his own right you're still keeping up in the farm department it's just the fact that mission on this uh on the victor is just that much better right because 12 minutes in he's above the farm pace whereas Minji's only at the farm pace and minji has not really made a whole lot of plays outside of lane too so he has been in the game farming up trying to keep pace with mission but you do start to see the difference between these two carries and now it's starting to be the difference in items mission goes ahead and completes his ludens first uh it's oh, not the voila. first mythic in this game though because the three and one nami gets the imperial mandate at That's like 11 huge. minutes on the game clock. That, that is pretty massive. And you have to respect that if you're CFO. But they are going to try and get into the dragon to start off this hex tech. Also, a pretty big amount of battle stats to try and pick up yep. themselves. Ushikino not going to let him get away for free, though. Well, maybe they will. That's a lot of damage. You can't contest uh, that. Yeah, right. they actually Trade just go ahead, give it away. The amount of zone tools on the side of CFO able to keep them at arm's length. And this is also them bringing... Oh, Okay, this is an engage. Whoa. This is pretty. All right, another wave. They find Koala here. Hold. A lot of damage. Here comes Minji, but they might be able to take out at least one with the pullback from Koala. Gemini baits the rest of the team away, and that will be all for not. It was a nice attempt by Beyond Gaming, but it doesn't pan out. And Beyond Gaming, they back off of the dragon because of the fact that Lee Kai up in that top side didn't walk down. Okay, oh, Minji, oh. he's taking a lot right. of damage. That's a lot of damage from the Chaos Storm. Oh boy. M Mission just feels like you get the full on outplay. Forces the flash. Oh, okay. Minji's getting outclassed. That was. That was pretty bonker. Uh, yeah. But rest. yeah, again, the, they give over the dragon in that instance because rest did come down from that top side. So. Lee Kai, as the Fiora, of course, he's not going to bring a ton to this second dragon fight. He just goes ahead, just says, hey, all right, the plan is just get more gold into the Fiora, get her caught up to speed. And then perhaps on the third or even fourth dragon, we look for the fight as trying to figure out what the soul is it's going to be cloud soul. Oh, we got we got cloud yeah never mind what you see up there with the respawn timer yeah. we do have the cloud so cloud actually gives a lot of leeway for both of these teams they aren't going to be forced into a position where you have to team fight and for the side of byg this is a fantastic role right because it means you can allow lee kai to just continue pushing on that next dragon and perhaps even on the next one because they have that two dragon buffer. Yeah. Well, not only that, I mean, like, once they start stacking up a little bit more, that's going to be uh, great for them with the move speed, because while they won't get battle stats out of it, they can avoid getting picked off and collapsed upon, which is something that CFO have been able to do quite a lot. So, 
15 minutes on the clock. We're split at a Drake apiece that Harold was, while not neutralized, still kind of minimized. And CL4 are going to go for another one here. They've had great objective control of the series. But Beyond have been able to get back a little bit cut into that as Gemini does get caught by Husha. Heart breaks to safety and the Ice Bola goes wide onto Harold. Koala is going to be forced to flash out of this pit unless, as expected, was right there to pull him back on the face call. But with those tools expended, Beyond have the opportunity to take out the Herald themselves if CFO There's don't have something to say in. about it first. TP, they're going to reset for the 5v5. Now Beyond had to make a choice here. Waiting for the Orn ultimate. Lasers flying. It's going to come down to a smite fight on the Herald and the Hostile takeover coming through the slow roller as well. It just peels them off. They take away Herald. Lee Kai's caught in the back of the pit and... Unfortunately, it looks like it's Shun that was caught with him, so he walks it out. As oh, wall cut comes out. Off, the wall comes through. They trapped him. Rest getting taken so low, but he stays alive. I can't believe no one's died in this one night star. Oh my lord. This fight is on a knife's edge. Just now it will be inside of BYG. Trying to turn the tempo into this mid lane. Who should the handshake? Out. Very it's low, and they out. take him down at the end with the Ignite tick, and Ikai couldn't close the trap. The tower was too healthy. So CFO, they make out like bandits, robber barons even there, Nightstar. They get the Herald out from under the nose of Beyond, and they get a kill in the mid. It's just the side of CFO having a little bit more team fight power right now. And we'll see the replay in this area, and just the threat of the Orn ultimate just is more than enough for them to scatter and because Wako Kima are zoned off on the side here they aren't able to contribute anything to this fight so while they would have loved to have snapped the trap shut onto them the the trap doesn't snap because the the chaos storm just controls the space so well however that wall to respond back from Minji does showcase why this Talia pick will be a big highlight in the series. As that was almost good enough to really flip the situation. Yeah, almost though doesn't quite cut it there. And the handshake pulls yep. in. They get the first damage on. Oh my goodness. It looks like we're going to have another fight after this as well. As they're just trying to fight it out over the chickens. Another few seconds and we'll have the Cloud Dragon first one of game spawning. But yeah, Nightstar, I, I love the... It's almost like Shun was like baiting intentionally because he did actually hop into the pit and had to flash away. And then the grand challenge gets issued and he's like, nope, I will not fight you. Not today. Gets out of there. Yeah. As the dragon's I'll, now alive. I'll ignore the challenge. Yeah. Just runs away from the duel, uh, which I think is a wise choice in the Fiora most of the time. Yeah. Uh -oh. Okay. Here, Here comes, comes the wall. wall. All right, the guy uh, cut off. Koala, but he doesn't go down here in the oh, Ram Jam. Actually, like buys a little more time. Koala gets thrown on the opposite side. It's mission gonna get caught. Here goes the hostile takeover. Wako gonna get berserked on and turns over to Minji for a second as the Chaos Storm comes through. It's blinking health bars both ways. But Rest is paying He's body block fight. right now as he tries to stay the alive. Is on. They're gonna get three man shoved. Minji opens up onto Koala and Rest is only able to buy a handful of seconds. They lose three members on the CFO side beyond get a much needed fight and should be able to take out this tower in the mid lane. And it really just boils down to how well Lee Kai and Wako are able to play these team fight situations, how well they're able to skirt around the outside of the fight. Because for the side of CFO, they do have very good front to back power because of that Orn. That in that particular instance though, they were able to shred past that Orn pick. And it was really just Great fight setup coming in from BYG. Playing more scattered yes. lineup. The ultimate lands onto mission. He's in a good spot though, where he isn't uh, he isn't under a ton of threat. But then he walks forward, gets caught out by the flick, and that's where things start to turn on its head because of the chunk onto some of these squishier members. That hey, we can just dump damage onto rest for free, and then oh. such an insane flick coming in from Minji like th this is permaban status now yeah I, both of these Talias have been godlike this game I mean I didn't know that the seismic shove could get that big as Harold gets dropped up top and it looks like CFO are just gonna try to accelerate by hard pushing this top side 
And they actually get a catch on to Husha, but he's able to dodge to safety for now. That wave is starting to get cut into, but with everybody but rest here, okay, shove onto the Herald. And, well, just gonna get the one extra plate charge, I think, but it's uh, being stalled pretty heavily. Harold getting stiff armed quite well, but still finally gets that charge in. That's gonna be it for CFO. I think they wanted to open up more of this map here, Nightstar, as the Baron has been their area of expertise, mm -hmm. and they are looking at it, but that's just the back way. Orn now level 13, so the Orn items are going to start piling in. Gets himself a Orn mail on top of it. So trying Ooh, his best to endure this 1v1. I would have much preferred to see the Anathema's chains here just because it reduces, it has damage reduction and also just allows you to uh, limit Lee Kai's impact in these team fights because if he does get CC'd, it extends the duration of that CC. But as things stand, we see a lot of that move vision moved from the bottom half of the map to the top half coming in from BYG. So it does leave some pockets vision, uh, pockets of vision exposed coming in for this next dragon. But BYG, they have that first cloud dragon which gives them even more leeway to play around Leekai. And I really think that they need to get just a little bit more resources into Leekai. If he gets to that second item, that does start changing the complexion of that 1v1. Yeah, it does. And that's the big thing right now, right? You're really looking for uh, Leekai to be able to just pop off in the side lane, become a massive threat. Because that's why you picked the Fiora. You want to make sure you draw attention that way. But so far, they've kind of been playing it out in the 5v5. It's worked out for them more recently. Gold lead for Beyond Gaming. Dragon lead as well. But CFO, they got a Victor. They got a Callista. They got a Viego. It does feel like their late game starts to look a little bit better as the time goes on. And this lead is not nearly Higher. as big. Almost non-existent. 500. Yeah. The lead's not that large. And BYG are starting to shift into that mode where it has to be more about the side lane pressure uh, rather than the straight up team fights. However, we have nine kills in this game, Pyra. And seven yes, are do. owned by our supports. <laughs> yeah, five kills on the Nami. Combat. Just build, just build oh, a Medjai's already and shouldn't he gets caught. Immediately burns both his sums to get out of there. A great collapse by Beyond Gaming. And that's important. We're about a minute and 15 to the next dragon yep. fight. And Baron is always an they opportunity. I want to see Beyond pull some triggers here. You're absolutely right, the Night Star. The kill's not that high. And where they are, it's all in those supports. It's massive that Kino has had such an outsized <laughs> impact on this one. Sitting on the Oblivion Orb as well. I kind of want him to just be a, a Medjai's reader this game. I know yeah, books definitely... and water don't usually mix. But, uh, you know... It's... Get, a, get some waterproof sleeves or something. I don't know. Get a get a candle, whatever. Yeah. Get some, you know, high class water. You know, there's got to be like the... waterproof books. Like that's got to be a thing. You know, like like those kids books, like just made out of plastic. Oh yeah. Medjay's uh, is basically a kids book. It's just you get lots of damage out of it. Yeah. I mean, it's a wizard book. So <laughs> it's an easy read. You'd imagine it the is. extra magic it's, in it's the book the first probably wizard keeps it waterproof. Book. You would have to hope that'd be like the first spell they put on a, a magic book, right? Like, this book can get wet and be fine. Otherwise, like, bad priority for wizards. I don't know. The League of Legends universe, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of questionable things, I think it's fair yeah. to say. So I won't really go too deep down that rabbit hole as CFO look to line things up here, looking for a pick, looking for a play, rest the import. Here comes Hoops Ball, Ball, as they do manage to get the catch out on a mission, but he goes gold to buy some time, and in goes that hostile takeover, and the call of the Forge God, everything dumped into the disengage, but the fight is not over yet. Lee Kai, Waco looking to collapse. They find Gemini, who's forced to heartbreak straight in the waiting arms of Lee Kai, finds the kill. They manage to get a yoink back, but Koala's already dead in that pullback mission. Isolated, big shutdown beyond gaming our cleaning house on a CTBC Flying Oyster. And it's the side of BYG able to capitalize on the mispositioning coming in from CFO. On this Victor pick, once more we see Mission overextending himself. This time he has a stopwatch, he's able to buy some time. 
but those kinds of egregious mispositionings you can't commit those time after time and we saw in the PSG series it happened time after time that it almost did cost them that five game series it was on the nice side like it BYG, will they capitalize on that this time around now CFO they will still get the dragon but the extra fight stats uh, coming in from the extra golden flux it's going to be massive for BYG especially when you have the Fiora now onto a complete two items that does shift the power the power dynamic straight into the fjord in the 1v1 and not to mention they're winning team fights with the fjord that shouldn't be happening to begin with when you have an orn yeah this is uh, honestly rest rest forge god calls have just not been the most impactful when you compare let's take a look at how this fight sets up they use pretty much everything as a disengage the weaver's wall comes out and immediately a brilliant brilliant ult by Husha. Mission buys time, as you said, but look at everything. Like, Forge God doesn't hit anything. It's a dodge, but it, like, you're not trying to fight the fight. You're trying to get out of there, and now your tool doesn't exist anymore, and they're not on the same page. Gemini goes in, immediately regrets it, heart breaks out, straight into the split. Now with the Baron empowered minions, you can see picture in picture, and Mission just completely gets caught out in the wrong spot. It's looking like we're getting ourselves a series. After that first big victory for CFO, beyond her firing back there, the Forge got again. Why are you doing that? Nobody wants yeah, to fight. Forge God. That's the thing. Great tears. Now the wall comes in. They are cut off uh, to a degree. Minji is taking a little over. The guy starting to run. Train. The team fight Fiora just diving for the cleanup of the kills. Replace that sword with a mop because this janitor duty here. And now beyond a broken straight into the base. Finding not one, but it looks to be soon two inhibitors. Unless they want to just end this right now on the death timers. Mission 30 seconds away. Gemini 25. Beyond realize they can do this game in even less time. They get the knock up, knock back. Rest has nowhere to go even in the bellows breath. He just barely hangs on, but they are working their way through on the base. Shouldn't take in low. Minions take out that inhibitor, but Beyond can't quite end it here. The game will continue. Game continues, but it's now a 7,000 gold lead for the side of BYG. They aren't able to secure that top in him, but they break the mid one. We're incredibly close to cracking the Nexus Towers as well, and it's just... Uh, it's just CFO coming in with this composition that you would say outscales. However, it's just mission being out of place, non-stop, and then rest, unfortunately, on this Orn hasn't looked that great. Yes, individually in the lane phase has been fun. And but that's not what you see that he. For. Yeah, we we see that he understands how to play Orn in lane, which might have also been one of those questions as well. But the execution around the Orn later on in the game, while you can see the idea behind some of these ultimates, because there's just no follow-up from the rest of his team, these ultimates also to look really, really silly. And Beyond have just been able to stretch CFO around the map at this point. The 4-1 is in full swing, and they have so much control over the map. So they can just wait as they polish off the last of the turrets outside of base. Just for this next dragon to come up, I don't really think it's going to be a soul game based on the way it's going. Probably the next Baron should decide things, as that's about two minutes and change away. Mm -hmm. And the shoe's on the other foot. CFO are going to have to find that Hail Mary of a fight. But who are you looking for? A flank from rest? He's got to do a lot better than we've seen him this game. And here comes the Weavers Wall. They made him get the opportunity as they cut CFO off from their own base turret and dish some serious Woo. chunk damage to it. Shouldn't take it low. Meanwhile, nobody's defending Viora. Yeah, they have to start pulling down their victor in the event a team fight did break out, right? Whenever that wall comes down, you're really concerned about just the all in trigger from the side of a BYG, but they play super measured here. Now they're gonna try and finish off. Oh, oh Shun's bursted. Goodbye. Ah, the call of the Forge God does manage to get a couple of knockups as well as that hostile takeover, but with Shun gone, the core is really out of it. Mission needed to kinda do trapped more damage. Here. Leak Kai completely untouched. They're kind of caught between a rock and a hard place, and they're looking for Leak Kai. 
but he dashes away to safety yet again. CFO are waiting on Shun to come back into this one. Husha just keeps them at bay as that tower under threat. This is the last remaining inhibitor sure to fall as they get the stun off onto rest, get him knocked in. The grand challenge is issued. He's able to flash away. However, Lincoln Health Bars means that last inhib is going to fall down and even though beyond, they keep it measured. They don't end it here. They have absolutely cracked CFO's base like a nut. Just in time for the dragon spawn. It will be the third dragon go into their hands. Actually, move speed. Not going to matter a ton in this last moment here. And it's all about this next Baron. Do CFO come and contest, or do they just settle in and just say, all right, we'll get as much EXP as we can get, buy our elixirs to just have the best opportunity for a Hail Mary fight around our double nexus. The only issue is you've got double super streaming on it. So it's a lot of extra gold influx about to come towards you. But the problem is it's a lot of minions to try and fight against, and they're going to take a proactive approach fight their way clean out this mid wave and they're the ones actually first onto the objective they're trying to pull the away the Fiora. from the situation but he should just go for the end he will look for that one as beyond trying his four members to pick them off stop here they the can just stop the forts in the back at the moment it's the nexus turrets they might be able to win a fight but stop they the certainly board. can't win the war on this one as the fiora takes down one tower two tower the teleport coming in Good but it's night. for beyond gaming and that is gonna be the end even with the cancel Lee Kai minji shows up just in time to see that one go we're up one to one nice tower we got a series You don't hate the attempt from CFO because you know against double super minion waves you had to make a bold call and the bold call they made was go straight to Baron if Beyond Gaming are behind on the play or if Lee Kai is just not that far pushed up that play works out because they're able to get the recalls off the base isn't threatened and they can reset the situation, farm out those double, double minion waves with the extra help of Baron minions uh, fighting back. But it doesn't pan out that way. And beyond gaming, this as clinical as game one was, game two was that for the side of beyond gaming. And it looks like it's just going to be a battle for blue side here. It might be. So far, 100% win rate. And Beyond Gaming definitely do what they do best in this series. They find an earlier game comp, too, to make it work for themselves. And you have to respect the decision from CFO. So many teams would just try to turtle it out and slow lose anyways. And they knew that. Not this squad. They're going to go down in a blaze of glory, and they certainly do. Uh, unfortunately, not at home to defend their base. But a really, really good set of plays from Beyond. And I think for the CFO side, we're starting to see some of the weaknesses in their abilities to play certain champions to the effect. Rest did not look great outside of the landing phase. His Ornn ultimates were on to a single target at best most of the time. It did feel like he just wasn't quite at the same level that we expect from him. Yes, he held his own in lane against a Fiora and that's pretty impressive, but you don't pick an Ornn for the 1v1 potentially. You need to get those 5v5s and unfortunately they just couldn't quite do it. I also think the Callista was successfully shut down. Shun had a lot of positional errors himself that cost him flashes, cost him his life didn't have to be that way and it's showing that in game number two here especially blue side beyond they also possess the ability to get the outdraft mm -hmm. and it is showing two key factors is that cfo they don't have an answer to the fiora and in this bottom lane the 2v2 will be key it will be absolutely massive what both of these 2v2s draft here to take into the bot lane because that sets up how the rest of the map plays out. You can accept rest being on the Orn pick if that bot lane does get ahead and because then you have a tool to follow up onto the Orn ultimate, right? But because that bot lane was set behind, you don't want to just throw in your Renata like that to follow in on that Orn ultimate because then like your Renata sort of dies for free because Kalissa just wasn't in a position where she could auto attack in these fights. Again, comes back to the fact this was a first pick to Leah. 
they immediately picked uh, Callista into it, and you can't walk up. It's simple no, as that. And the thing is, Mission was outplaying Minji, and with a little bit of help from his jungler, like actually bullying the Talia out a lot in lane. But when it came to the team fight impact, it was so much better from Minji because he just instigated every single fight with the Weaver's Wall. He cut off key members, and there seemed to be a bit of disarray. CTBC weren't able to actually get back into it. And I, I, I do think that this type of composition doesn't suit them as well. They definitely don't seem to be all on the same page. Uh, we're taking a look back at, at some of the fights here. This was one of the ones that started. They had a brilliant ice ball. The Glacial Prison lands on a mission. He's forced to pop his stopwatch, which we are very grateful to him for buying. But then, yeah, this Call of the Forge God does absolutely nothing. And now you spent so many of your mm -hmm. tools disengaging. You split the party. And I'll tell you, from playing a lot of D&D, &D, you never split the party. <laughs> Gemini uh, gets bursted, yeah. gets out. Haha, -ha, I'm a genius. Oh, wait, I'm not because there's the Fiora for free kills and mission, he greets for the honey fruit. Yeah, th this was a situation where you could see Rast is able to reset the fight with the ultimate. The only issue was the rest of his team didn't fully commit to the reset. They split up, as you mentioned, and when you split up, when you are 5v5 composition, it allows yourself to get collapsed upon by these uh, champions like a, a Lucian, like a Fiora, who are exceptionally good at mop-up duty. So the moment right. you expose yourselves like that, these two champs will go to town, and that's how we saw it play out. Uh, the Fiora pick is going to be instrumental throughout the rest of the series, unless if Rest does show he's willing to blind pick it himself. I think that could be the possible change. I would love to see that because Rest, it's one of the few champions he hasn't actually shown up in the top side. I mean, you look at the champions he's played this year, it's been all about the Gnar, the Gwen earlier on, who played the GP pre nerfs, Renekton's getting respect banned against him, and I think that makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense. He's even played things up top like the Wukong instead of in the jungle, and they've played the Mordekaiser. The Aatrox in game one was brilliant. But you're right, these are all carry champions for the most part. Very few of them really fit the bill as the tanks, and I think that is a weak point that's been identified by Beyond. Early on this game, CFO still had a gold lead. It's worth keeping in mind, the level one outplay on yeah. Lushinami, it looked like it was going to set the pace for the game, but then they get punished for their hubris, Nightstar. The bloodthirsty Nami picks up so many kills, and first strike Lucian starts to go to town. Rest doesn't nearly get as much done as the Fiora on the opposite side in the hands of Lee Kai, who gets his revenge for game one. And beyond, right back on the board, same game time, just about 32 minutes. And uh, I think we've had two games go drastically different ways. It's going to be an exciting one as we will take a look at who wins the MVP. And it's Minji in the mid. I think he could have uh, maybe given it to Kino, but uh, I think this is well earned too, despite the gold differential not being in his favor. It wasn't about the damage. It was about mm -hmm. building the walls. They had a lot more impact uh, than I think mm -hmm. just about anything else in this game. Yeah, Minji with these Talia walls, also with the flicks, finding key picks and forcing key summoner spells. Mission almost never had his summoner spells available because right when it comes off a of cooldown, he's just immediately forced to use the flash right away because he was just caught out. So just no more of these control mages, Pyra. Uh, no Victor, no yeah. Oriana. Well, There's a reason why all the other regions have killed off this these champions. Hopefully both the teams get the memo from you, and I would like to see it. We'll have to wait until game three starts right on the other side of this break.